it's cold in here, guys. I have a blanket. You've got your sweater. No, but I want to like curl up on the couch. <laughs> All right, big box, big, big box. kind of heavy box. All right, ready? Oh yeah. A little piece of the moon. You spelled piece wrong. It's not like moonstone, is it? Okay, whatever, what is this? Oh, this is selenite. I think that kind of looks like a kidney stone. And this, well, I don't even want to know. <laughs> You're so talented. You may be familiar with selenite. Selenite is gypsum. We've had gypsum on a previous episode. We were talking about desert roses. So flip that link up on screen and you guys can go watch that, but you're gonna watch that after this episode. So like go click on that link, make sure it opens up in a new tab. Watch that episode after you watch this episode. But what I do wanna talk about is selenite. I love gemstones and I love minerals and I love selenite. So today's gonna be fun. Um, we've got two beautiful specimens. I have four beautiful members of my production team. I'm trying to be nice to them so they bring me more hot drinks from a very popular, well-known coffee place. <laughs> based in Seattle. So selenite is a variety of gypsum. Gypsum has a two on the Mohs scale and was actually chosen by Frederick Mohs to represent the number two on the Mohs scale, which is pretty cool. Fine grain varieties of gypsum is called alabaster, which you may be familiar with. Gypsum is well known to be used for as a thermal insulator. So you see it in like drywall and plaster. Is there a difference between drywall and plaster? Is it the same thing? No. They are not. Uh, so selenite, it's way too soft to be faceted, and that's actually why I'm not gonna touch it. I don't wanna do anything to it. It's too soft to be faceted, and therefore you really don't see it used in jewelry. I have never seen it used in jewelry, but you do see it as you know collector's pieces, and that's pretty easy to see why. It's got an interesting crystal structure. It's cool to look at, and you can learn a lot about the monoclinic crystal system. You can learn about what, what selenite is made of and why it's used. So there are benefits to stones that are not put in jewelry, and those benefits are education, collecting, you're gonna see a lot of this kind of stuff in museums and for educational purposes. Selenite gets its name from the Greek word for moon because of the reflection off of these surfaces. And when I first opened the box, it did kind of look like it was glowing. Like, you know, maybe there was moonlight popping out of the box, but obviously it was just a gemstone. I do know a lot of people use selenite for uh, metaphysical purposes. Some people believe that it can clear the crown chakra. I don't know too much about that, but if you want to learn more, comment below and maybe we can talk about that in another episode. But I think what's really cool is, you know, both of these pieces are selenite, but look how how different they look. You can kind of see a similar, you know, the sharp edges and, and the jagged kind of crystal faces, but you know, these are two different examples of one, um, one pretty cool collector's item. So the coolest thing about this piece is the twinning. So, you know, right down here, this is the center line, but you can see these crystals jutting out on both sides. And it does, you know, even under this light, it seems to glow. It's not that bright in here, but I can, you know, I can see where the name came from. Elizabeth is here and she's gonna tell us the differences between these two specimens. That one is actually shaped like a fish, if you by the way didn't see that yet. This is shaped, oh it does, it's kind of shaped like a no, puffer fish. one. What? <laughs> the other one is a fish. Shut up, everyone here, stop. Hand it to me, I'll show I you want, No, I see it, I see, see the it? fish. Yes, that's why I gave it to you, it is a fish. Well, but I thought the tail. twinning went down right here. Yes, it does. So there's twinning right here. But they I have was a distinct <sighs> tail on them looks like a split tail on a fish at the very end. Like so that. we've this is it looks like a fish. I thought this one kind of looked like a puffer fish. <laughs> Do you think this looks like a puffer fish? Because I think this kind of looks like a puffer fish. And everyone else laughed at me. So we've got two fish, two fishes, two fish. So this piece right here is super important because it's from a deposit in Canada that you don't find a whole lot. And Elizabeth said the ball is very unique because it, it was formed and it wasn't like attached to anything. So this is a really cool location where it's from. And this is cool because it does look like a fish, even though I think both of them look like a fish, but. All right, guys, so right here, this is a piece of green selenite. Elizabeth just literally slid it on my table from our back room that has all of our specimens. She couldn't put it in a box because it's so delicate, but green selenite, and you can see the kind of, I don't wanna say spiky appearance, but this is an example of bladed crystals, and it looks kind of similar to this piece right here, but what is really neat is if you turn around on the back, that's grass, that's actual plant matter, which is so cool. This specimen is beautiful. I really don't wanna to touch it, but what it, it looks like 
like it's almost kind of fuzzy and I want to run my fingers over it and I kind of want to like cuddle up to it, but I know it's really delicate, but it doesn't look like it's covered in, in crystals. It looks like it's covered in like something fuzzy and warm and co comforting. All right, so this piece right here, again from Elizabeth, she won't come on air right now, she's bashful. This piece right here is unique because it's from Oklahoma and you really don't find pieces like this in Oklahoma. So the first thing that I noticed was how intricate this piece is. It looks like, I don't know, kind of reminds me of like a jungle gym or something that you would find underneath the sea. But Elizabeth told me that the inclusions right here are what give it kind of this hourglass appearance and it's called hourglass selenite, right? And what's really cool is, you know, there's all these little pieces of sand. I mean, it looks like, it does not look like a stone. It looks like something living. So what's interesting about selenite is that it's actually an evaporite. And Elizabeth touched on this in our video about Desert Rose, which I'll make sure the link is up again so that you guys can check out that video in another tab after you're done watching this video. And what's interesting about evaporite is that, you know, most stones take for, you know, a long time to be made by mother nature, but evaporites really don't. You know, they're made relatively quickly and it has to do with the changing water levels. And if you want to learn more about that, check out the video that I just mentioned. But in the meantime, I want you to take take a closer look at the selenite examples that we have here. And I would love for you to take a closer look at this one. I really don't think I want to pick it up like this. So take a closer look at those crystals. Elizabeth called them blade crystals, and you can kind of see why. They look like literal blades of grass. And then there is actual plant matter on the back. But today we're going to focus on the selenite. All right, and then I'm going to do another closer look. I want you to take a closer look at this piece. Doesn't it kind of look like a jungle gym or something living that you would find under the sea? I mean, it is hard to believe that this is actually a stone, which I think is so cool. And this is one of the reasons I wanted to talk about selenite today was because the really cool ways that the crystal actually grows. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. And I hope to catch you next week on Unboxing. Thank you so much.